Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. So it's time. It's time for Shaka to go, guys. And and I've been so reluctant to, to do any UT basketball content, not because uh, I'm not passionate about it or I don't support the program or anything of that sort. It's just sad. It's a sad thing to watch. And, and at this point, I didn't even have the, you know, I just had to step into the office and, and, and share some of my thoughts with you guys, uh, you know, as they lose 38 points in Morgantown today on, on MLK Day and, you know, following a, a home loss uh, to the Kansas Jayhawks. They're now two and four in Big 12 play, 12 and six on the season, had a very light schedule compared to previous seasons to start out the year. You know, we've made every excuse in the book uh, for Shaka Smart. Shaka Smart, uh, a guy who I had high hopes for coming from VCU, uh, you know, but it's clear to me that is, you know, as high as everyone was on Shaka, it's really over that final four run in 2011. Uh, because what have you done for me outside of that? I mean, really. And and then here at Texas, you know, you when you see the t guys like TJ4 get on Twitter and, and say it's disappointing and disheartening and, and, you know, and not not the a level of apathy that's set in over the program. But then on top of that, the, the product that they're putting out there on the court, uh, getting pushed around the lack of toughness, the lack of development, uh, there's there's nothing offensively that anybody really essentially does well. Uh, on a consistent basis, and it's been the case like that for years. And and and, and many people from outside of Austin, kind of looking in, you know, we'll we'll, we'll kind of turn up every now and again and have a decent performance or a decent showing. Or if North Carolina comes in, we might get up for that. But no matter what it's been, there's always an excuse, um, and and I'm tired of it. And I tell you guys about my mom and, and all that type of stuff all the time. One thing she always told me, don't embarrass me. I don't like being embarrassed. Uh, it's one thing if you guys come out, we put forth a good effort uh, and, and we're coming up short. We don't have the talent, injuries, what I can, I can, I can deal with all that for, for a certain amount of time. But when, when it gets to the point of embarrassment, when it gets to the point of losing, by 38 points, you start to, you, you know, I, I get off work and, and I'm, I'm tuning in the game and I'm looking at this and I'm like, what the hell is going on, man? You know, it, the score is 43 to 17 and it's not even in the half. And I'm looking at the box short, I'm like 17 points. There's two minutes left in the, in the first half. And, and, and all of my guys have more fouls than points. And, and let's break it down. I mean, Shaka, we, you know, after the first year with, with Isaiah Taylor and, and Javon Felix and those guys, it was like, all right, well, let's get his guys in here. Uh, let's, let's get some, some good guard play. We had, you know, the one and dunce. We, we, you know, we landed a Jared Allen from Round Rock and we have a horrific season despite him getting better throughout, throughout the season. Then you go and get a Mo Bamba, a top five overall player, um, who was, you know, surefire home run. You get a Matt Coleman to, to pair up with him. You make the tournament again and you're one and done. Um, and then you look at even and then even the Jackson Hayes, who comes out of nowhere and develops into an NBA player, still don't make the tournament. But, you know, at least it's like, all right, well, we ended, you know, we made fun of the NIT thing, but we felt like the team came together. We felt like the team started to show some sort of promise to where it's like, all right, maybe this is the type of momentum we need. We don't have necessarily a one and done at all coming in. We have experience. Matt, Go Matt Coleman now in his third year. Courtney Ramey played a lot. Uh, it's time for these guys to grow up. Are they going to, you know, we we put so much on Dylan Ositowski and, you know, oh, well, he wasn't skilled enough. For Curran Roach, he wasn't mature enough. There's been so many guys that have moved in and out of this program. Elijah Mitchell Long and it's the same result. It's the same product. It's the same lack of offense, lack of ability to score. And I'm talking about basic things. I'm not even talking about uh, uh, out of timeout plays and, and attacking zone versus man or, or, or anything that opponents even do to us. 
I'm talking about when, you know, on just basic driving kicks, can you make open threes or, or, or shoot the ball with confidence on a consistent basis? When you're around the rim, bunnies, we don't even have guys with the ability to break their man off the dribble and, and get something to the rim. Uh, the, 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 our most effective offense seems to be, you know, if we are able the, the, on occasion to feed the post or, or get something around the rim with Jericho Sims from a consistency basis, you know, because he brings a lot of effort. But again, as I mentioned earlier, the lack of toughness, they, they, they get bullied out there. Uh, and that's something, why, you know, growing up and I, look as a Texas fan and somebody who's followed this program for a very, very long time. Uh, at least since since my you know middle school years essentially uh, going Rick Barnes and, and that whole era the one thing I never felt like was we weren't you know, we weren't getting embarrassed UT's never been a basketball school let's be real about that it can be to certain, to some degree I don't think we'll ever be Kentucky or, or Duke or UCLA or anything like that but what I'm saying is. Rick Barnes did prove here that this team, you know, this is a program that should make the tournament in and out. And every now and again, if you get the right player, you get the right talent and, and folks on board, uh, we can make a run, right? And 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 send guys to the NBA. You know, we were consistently seeing folks to the NBA, consistently making the NCAA tournament and competing. And I think at, at that at the base level there, I'm not gonna say I'm never gonna say that's good enough. But that's got to be at least a baseline uh, for what this program is, especially when you're investing the type of money that you're investing into Ashaka Smart, into the Moody Center that's coming. Um, Chris Del Conte has a decision on his hands to make. And it's very, very unfortunate because, again, uh, I like Shaka Smart as a person, um, but this is embarrassing. Uh, again, you know, TJ Ford, I mean, look at those old school, you know, uh, uh, Brandon Mouton, PJ Tucker, Brad Buckman, those guys at least fought, man. At least they fought, you know, even going into the, to the, to the Daniel Gibson, LaMarcus Allridge teams that were a little bit more talented and to KD, um, you know, at least, you know, they could dribble pass and shoot. I don't even see that here. And what I mean, it, it, I mean, look at the brother Matt Coleman, man. This is this is a guy who was a starting point guard at Oak Hill. And for those who don't know, Oak Hill is a powerhouse high school basketball program. Carmelo Anthony, all the folks that have come out of that 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 program, even Kevin Durant one year. And for Matt Coleman to be a starting point guard there, I don't even see the player that we recruited. And he's in year three. Courtney Ramey. I don't see any type of development offensively with these guys. I see the effort defensively, and you guys tell me, okay, we're going to bring in a Luke uh, uh, Lalich from from Michigan, and to help up the def to ramp up on the defense. We didn't need to ramp up on the defense. The defense is, is what it is at this point. I need people that can dribble, pass, and shoot. I need people that you know can 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 catch the ball in the post and do something with the rock. On a consistent basis, whatever, whatever you need to do, whatever your identity is, they don't even have an identity offensively. That's the other thing. We can talk about, you know, how basketball has evolved and transitioned. It's more of a, you know, more of a free flowing game, even at the collegiate level. Um, but whatever, some teams still have that identity to 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 work through the post and uh, mid post and whatnot. We don't have any of that. Um, and and now you're starting to see. From a recruiting standpoint, if you're a guy like a Greg Brown, uh, uh, the, the brother from Vandergriff, who's a five star here in Austin, why would you consider Texas? And I'm not trying to negatively recruit this program, but like right now, like where are the guards? I see Courtney Ramey, I see Matt Coleman, and everybody else d doesn't even look comfortable handling the basketball. Nobody does anything on this basketball team with any sort of confidence, again, on a consistent basis. They told me Jace Febris was a knockdown shooter coming out of high school, and I see it. Some nights he shoots the lights out, and I get it, you know, college kids, streaky, whatever, but, like, some of the looks these guys get, and, and they just, their body language. Again, I tell you all with my YouTube video, football videos, I'm a big body language guy. It's 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 pathetic. Across the board, it's pathetic. And, and, and some of that, a lot of that is on the head coach, and, and uh, I think it's time. I think it's time to go in a different direction, whether you want to go – after Chris Beard at Texas Tech, that will be the big name people talk about. But honestly, whatever direction they go in, because Chris Beard is more of a defensive-minded guy himself, right? It, it, and there's something going on here at Texas where it's just like, look, I need I need people that want to hoop. 
And when I say hoop, I'm talking about let's come out and get some buckets. There's nobody out there that's out there to get buckets, even with any type of remote confidence on a consistent basis. Yeah, we, we'll send some bigs to the league and, and we can develop them and, and, and they, they'll play with energy. But that's not, what co- that's not how the college basketball game works. Uh, if you pay if you pay any uh, attention to the sport, you look around the the college basketball landscape. I mean, it's a crazy, crazy year. The teams are moving up and down, and uh, but UT until they secure any type of decent guard play, um, this this group is not it. It's not it, and it's sad. It's sad, and and it's more to come because the Big Twelve is top. You know, at the top, the you know Baylor now ranked number one. They it looks like they're going to escape against OU tonight. Kansas is Kansas. Tech just came coming off a national championship appearance. What's Texas going to do? They got to make a move. They got to make a move. Cristo Conti, balls in your court. All right, that's, that's those are my thoughts. Like I said, just a little quick thing I'm I'm doing on the phone, but y'all y'all hit me up. Let me know in the comments what you think. It's sad. It's sad. All right, y'all. Peace. Horns always up.